it with TV, bro. Why did you leave live, man? Because that's a good gig. Live, live was a great gig. Mm. But you've got to know when a good gig is, is finished. Oh, okay. And my thing is this. Say you're on live, for example. Live got as big as live was ever going to get. The numbers that myself, well, in the time it was myself, Loot, myself, Loot and Pearl, we were on 9 p.m. Mm. Numbers were great. It was huge. We moved to 7.30. Loot Love left. It was me and Pearl. Yeah. Pearl and I, followed by Lerato and I. Those numbers are record numbers. Like, show's never been that big. Shit was bigger than fuck. Yeah. And we did well. Mm. I was on through Loot, through Pearl, through Lerato for six years. You did six so years? So I did this. I got on the show. It went up. We were up here, up here, up here, up here. We stayed up here, up here, up here, up here. Then we went up further when we moved to 7.30, up here, up here, up here. What next? Mm. You know what I'm saying? Now I must just lay on that show forever and ever, doing the same thing. Do you think you get bored quickly? It's not that I get bored quickly. I think I you just do, think, bro. like, you need to tell Abanya at some point, dog. You know, that show had served the need that it needed to serve for me as Waras. When I walk around and I go anywhere, people still know I'm Waras. Yeah, I didn't yeah. all of a sudden stop being famous. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? People yeah. still want to take photos with me. Everybody still knows who I am. So I'll always have the value that life has given me. Yeah. Um, but I think it was time to move on. Also, the thing is, at the time, the SABC, up until now, you know, that place is a fuck show. <laughs> so they had the conversation with us where they were like, yo, fam, you need to move on because this is the direction we're taking. But the thing is, like... I didn't know, agree with the direction that they were taking, yeah. but I had to support it because... The thing is, what amazes me about you, right, is because um, fame is a drug, you know? Mm. That's why you get, like, celebs doing stupid shit just to stay relevant. Yes. So you're at the pinnacle of your career. You're doing fucking dope shit on radio, uh, top of um, uh, uh, that show, live TV. Yes. Doing great numbers, but you still chose to, like, walk away from it. Walk? I, you know... Where else other people would have been like, nah, I gotta keep this shit forever. Keep, you know, and then just cause keep, chaos. Just, with yeah, this. just pause this. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. So, this is my thing. Quit while you're ahead. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I just feel you need to, you need to, you know better than anyone else when your time is up. You know better than anyone else when you've done enough. Do you understand what I'm saying? Don't feel pressure because you think you're that guy. To be that guy for everyone. Who do you think? Like, oh, I have to be on because people are going to think I'm pop and they're going to think I fell off. Oh my God. No. Who do you think in the game right now should just quit? Plenty people. Okay, give me five names. I cannot give you five names off the top of my head. I, don't, I hardly consume anything in our local entertainment industry. Should I give but me some names? And then you tell me. And then I say quit or don't quit. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Bonang. No. Must never quit. Mm. Too much of a boss. Um, Euphonic. Must never quit. Too much of a boss. Mm. Sabby. Shouldn't quit. He should stay there where he is. Uh, ankle tap. Stay where he is. Fresh. Fresh should stay where he is. Okay. Those wait. You see, there's a difference. <laughs> Those people are in the right places for themselves. <laughs> you see, your, your list was cuck. <laughs> because... Let me give you an example. Yes. Bonang is not on radio. Yes. She's not on TV. Yes. But she's shitting on everyone. Yes. So she's not taking any jobs. Yes. Why yes. must she quit? Yeah. You, you know what I'm saying? Mm. It's like you're asking her to quit being herself. Ah, got you. You know what I mean? Yeah. What should she do? Okay, I'll, I'll Switch her fucking better. Instagram off? <laughs> like, no, dog. Why? You know what I'm saying? Fresh has made this move to 947 now. Yes. Technically... He just got on. Yeah. It's another, it's another lease of life. That's it. Yeah. Ankle Tap and Sabi, they are the captains of the ship at YFM. Mm. They are the drive time and the break. They're the anchors. They can't quit. Yeah. The place will be fucked. <laughs> They've already put six, eight years into these niggas, dog, so that they can steer the ship at where they are. You know what I mean? Yeah. If they quit, the place, will t the place is doomed. Yeah. Because who are they going to put in their place? You see, I don't know if they have the reserves there on the bench to fill the shoes of those guys. Yeah. Dangerous. So did you ever miss... So you left um, the, the business industry to start your security company. Is that all that you're busy with? At I moment? kind of... When I was... I wasn't... Time. You know, you, you can't create more of it. Okay. It's very limited supply. Yeah. I wish I had more. Yeah. But I don't. Mm. And I was finding that between 5FM, Live Amp on Fridays, and the security company, and I have another media business as well that we were busy with at the time. Um, 
and all the other shit that I do. I do a lot of like side stuff. Like mm. I'm, I'm a, I'm a, a thug. I'm a consumer of information. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So I, I learn and I read and I, I research a lot of stuff. And if I see that there's a gap here and I think there's a gap and we can do something, I like to invest a little bit of time into that. Not mm. too much. Mm. But there was a lot of those opportunities coming my way at the time. And I was like, fuck it. I've got three kids, three boys, two mothers, a new wife. Mm. See, I'm under pressure, bro. Mm. On a monthly basis, I've got to come up with... X amount. Upwards of 100,000 rand mm-hmm. before I buy myself a, a fucking yep. underpants. Yep. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. It's pressure on me. Yeah. And I was like, I need to, on this entrepreneurial tip, the business stuff, I've got to maximize on what opportunities I have in gotcha. that. Because if I don't, I don't think I'm going to have a long-term plan mm. for these lighties. Lighties are small. They're 10, 8, and 5. Mm. You know, Troy's only getting to big school next year. Mm. Grade R or some shit. That nigga's got a 12-year journey ahead of him. The other one's only in grade 4. The other one is in grade 3. Their school fees are just going to go up and up. Yeah. So I need to be planning 10, 10 years, years from now. now. You know, what am I doing for these little niggas? You know what I'm saying? Are they going to come home to an apartment in Sandton? Which is nice. Mm. But it's not where I want my kids to grow up. I want to buy a house in Sanders. Mm. Shit, there's like 30 bar. (laughs) Where am I going to get 30 bar? Not from fucking DJing and being on live (laughs) amp. I can tell you that, much. You know what I mean? (laughs) So then I said, (laughs) wake up. (laughs) I looked at the business stuff. I took a step away from radio. I'd mm. been on for long, my son. Again, quit while you're ahead. I did well. I, you know, I was, I've had a blessed journey. The, the, the YFM, people loved me. It went great. I loved working there. I've got nothing bad to say about YFM. Mm. It was fucking great. I would, not, I would not choose any other station over YFM to have started on. Oh, yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. I went to 5FM. The team, the people I worked with, do me, from do me and Catherine and... Um, Ryan, my team that I worked with, to fucking everybody in the building, the cats that hired me, Aisha, Tim's uncle. You know what I'm saying? I made good relationships with good people and we did good radio and that show was fucking brilliant. So when I walked away, I walked away happy to say, I smashed it. You know Mm. what I mean? Mm. But now it was time for me to focus on this journey. Mm. And this journey required a lot more of my time. So I stayed on live, eh? But I subbed radio because Monday to Friday, I was at FNB Stadium sitting in meetings for two, three hours. I was meeting with other event promoters and people to sort out events, um, safety and security. I was doing jock plans. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's time intensive. Yeah, yeah, it is. And it was going well mm. because we were making a lot of money. Mm. So by investing that time, I was making considerably more money mm. in exchange for my time mm. than I would have been making on radio anyway. Yeah. And that is where... You need to look at your future and decide what am I doing, you know? It's weird because we come from different worlds. I come from a world where I can't see myself doing anything apart from radio. So I don't even think well, about it. Well, you're going to run into a... Well, you're cool because you, you're, you're a 32-year-old, 12-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> For those of us who are adults... <laughs> look, how many people can you list have been doing this shit for 20 years? Uh, I can list one. Fresh. It's fresh. Fat Joe. Okay. Oh, yes. Where's he now? He's at uh, Radio 2000. Yeah, but you see, he's had a sordid little time on radio. He gets fired, then he moves. Yeah, but he's still doing it. But he's still in demand. Yeah. And I think that's what you... That's a page I would take out of Fat Joe's book. Yeah. He's always been in demand. Like, he gets fired and people are like, oh, he's being fired. Boom, somebody else hires him. Yeah. What I'm trying to say is I cannot think of doing anything else apart from what I'm doing now. But with you, it's like, all right, cool. That's what I'm saying. I Mm. asked you, do you get bored quickly? Because it's like, all right, cool. I'm working in Photoshop. Ah, cool. Next. Next hustle. Cool, I'm DJing. All right, cool. TV, boom. Yeah. Let me start a uh, media company. All right, cool, boom. You know, you know what Let I start get. a security company. All right, boom. I get this I'm idea that market. there's always more. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? So like with the security stuff, when I joined the company that I joined, the guys were already doing it. Okay. But I looked at their business and they were, they were cool. They were comfortable. They were happy to be doing what they were doing. I came and I said, do you know that if you do this, it adds another whole side of the business where we can maximize. And they were like, Sounds cool. Let's dollar. So I look at it and I'm like, where can we find more? Even now with the security, I've, I've changed the whole shit up. You know what I'm saying? What I'm trying to do now is some next level shit. You know what I'm saying? Fuck but, events and all but, that shit. But, but on, on at, uh, your tombstone, what mm. do you write? What us what? What us? Shady lurker. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to know that 
I'd like to know that I was loved, I was liked. I, you know, I think that the people that I engage with, I'd like everybody. You know, like my mom once told me, she said, if I have to die at my funeral, she said, there'll just be a whole lot of girls confused as to who <laughs> each other is. <laughs> <laughs> they won't know who each other is. And they'll be like, who the fuck? Who is that bitch? Do you know what I'm saying? Let the hoes that I used to know from yeah. way before. From way before. Kiss me you from my head to, to my toe. Hey. Give me a paper and pen. Yeah. So I can write about, about this my life, life of, of sin. sin. <laughs> but it's like none of them, girls, guys, anybody that I've been with that's engaged with me. I'd like to know that there's nobody that says, you know what, fuck that guy. Oh, no, no. I you understand what I'm saying? I don't think that's where my question is. My oh, question okay. is like, so Black Coffee, I, Black Coffee, greatest DJ. Like, yeah. he's Tombstone, greatest DJ. Fresh, great radio presenter. I mean, yeah, radio presenter. Yeah. Radio legend. Yeah, okay. Banang, TV legend. So what else, what do we write? Oh, God, I don't know. I think I'm still <laughs> putting that together. Nah. I don't know, just write a nice guy. <laughs> For now, you know what I'm saying? I think it's all encompassing. I think it's very broad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I would like you to. A teacher of mine described me as. Shit, and I loved it always. I was actually going to tattoo it on me. Yes. A divergent thinker. Mm. You see, I used to be in trouble a lot. Mm. But not for being naughty. Mm. I was in trouble for being clever. Mm. You know what I'm saying? That's what she. That's the way she described it. And she said, you know. The teachers here have a very linear way of dealing with a naughty student mm. or pupil. Like, we used to get caned and shit, you know what I'm saying? Mm. We had our principal who was a very, he was a talker. He'd sit you down, tea and biscuits, and he'd be like, MacIver, why is this happening? Mm. And try to get through to you, you know? Then we had Mr. Snayman. He didn't talk anything. He didn't talk at all, in actual fact. If you went to see him, you had to turn around, then he fucking gave you six of the best. Yeah. And then we had this teacher who said to me, like, their way of disciplining and dealing with people is like, hey, you did something wrong, pa, there's mm. a buck slot. You did something wrong, write out lines. You did something wrong, go to de detention. But because you're a divergent thinker, you're naughty in a new way, in an unconventional way. Now they're trying to think of unconventional punishments because the shit that they're doing is not working. And you're not really doing anything wrong. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, I was naughty. I mean, I did yeah. plenty of shit that was wrong. Yeah. But I think she best described it in that I'm a divergent thinker. Yeah. I like to look at the world from a very different perspective. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that's an art. It is itself. an art. I think the biggest challenge with it is that people don't always listen. Mm. You see, you open your mouth and you say something and then people attack you. Yeah. You know, I, I, I use the example of Twitter. Mm. Twitter is a very dangerous place to believe that you've got any social equity. Mm. For me, Twitter is a means of making money. Mm. Brands come to me, they say, hey, we'll co-op you up X amount of money, tweet this thing seven times. I say, no prop. I tweet it. Now and then I engage in discussions. But every time I've engaged in discussions, I've learned very quickly that it's a fucking cesspool of idiots. <laughs> you know what I mean? A guy, like, you'll, you'll, you'll put something up that is a factual critique of something factual. You'll be like... Robert Mugabe died. He was a great African. Uh, he fucking chased all the farmers. Now six million people are starving. The fuck? You know what I'm saying? Then they'll be like, shut up. You're talking from a place of white privilege. I'm like, wow. Yeah. Wait, me? Yeah. What the fuck? Do you even know me? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So it's like, you can't have the type of debates our country needs to have. On a platform yeah. like that, yeah. You can't, you know? And you I know? think us divergent thinkers, hopefully one day if we get the chance, I, I, I hope that we will contribute valuably to that process. Do you know how to use a condom, dude? You got so Do many, I know how to use yeah, a condom? you got so many baby mamas, you got so many kids. You know, the thing is, I do know how to use one, but I like to have sex in the confines of my committed relationship. Ah! You see? So, hey, divergent what what? Hey, divergent what what? <laughs> I advocate for the use of condoms, mm. but I think before we get to the use of condom, why are you using one? Why must you use one? Mm. You need to understand it as the user of the condom. Why are you using that condom? Yeah. When I made my children, I was trying to make them. Uh, That's why I didn't use one. Yeah, you know, they weren't yeah. mistakes. Yeah. All of them. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I knew fully well what I was doing. Yeah. I wanted 
children. Yeah. I wanted boys. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I was just praying it's a boy, it's not a girl. You yeah. know? Yeah. And then the last one, I was like, I hope it's a girl, I hope it's a girl, it was a boy. Yeah. So I wanted those kids. I had them with someone whom I was in a committed relationship with, who I loved very much and still love very yeah. much. But I love her as the mother of my kids. kids yeah. We don't have to be together. Mm. But at the end of the day, I think people, when you decide you're using that condom, you must understand why you're using it. So I are mean, you using it to not get pregnant? Are you using it to protect yourself against STDs? Because mm. do you understand why we are saying use condoms? Mm. And cats don't understand it. You know, people give you answers like, ah, me, I don't use it. I don't like how it feels. You've obviously misunderstood why it needs to be used. Yes, you know, it's yeah. not there to try and make you, make feel, you feel shit. Yeah. The shit is there to protect you, you mm, know? Mm. So I do understand why condoms must be used. How many baby mamas you got? I've got two baby mamas. Two. Mm. And they get along? No, they hate each other. Is it? They don't get along at all. Yes, so you must have like uh, I have a very sleepless tough nights. Life. Yeah. <laughs> Hence, I need to make lots of money. <laughs> Shut like, them up. Yeah, money makes you... Makes your life a lot easier. Yeah, yeah. No, I don't think it'll shut them up, but it just like it can keep them off my back. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Because I, I feel like when they run out of shit to be cross about, they just cross with me for nothing. Because I remember, dude, like uh, if there's one guy in the industry who's smashed more than I have, it's got to be you. It's got to be more flavor. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> What's your yeah. body content right now, bro? Eh? What's your body content? <sighs> Fuck, I don't know. I My chick to. always asks me this question. Yeah. I don't know if I've given her the same answer consistently. <laughs> but it's a lot. <laughs> hey, it's, more than, a boy. it's more than it should be. But yeah. you see, when you're a lighty, there's nothing wrong with it. You know, that's what I always say to me. Like, sometimes society is harsh on people. They'll be like, ah, that chick, she's a whore. It's like, okay. Are you saying, when you say she's a whore, or that guy is a man whore, you know, like, let's... Mm. Equality, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, yeah. Let's judge everyone the same. Mm -hmm. What is your issue with it? Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Like that person is engaging in consensual sex yes. with other people with that are choosing to engage in it with that person. Yeah, with his own dick. With his own dick and with her own vagina and she wants it to happen. Yeah. He wants it to happen and the people he's having it with want it to happen back. Yeah. Now you, you understand. You out here like, ah, she's a whore or fuck him. He's a man whore. And that's why, that's why nothing. That's, mm. you know, it's one thing isolated, sorted out by itself. Yeah. So I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it. But for me, when, when you grow up and when you outgrow it, oh, you yeah. realize a lot of things about sex. You mm. know, we've been taught that yeah. sex is just this thing that you can just disconnect from Boom. and you can treat it like itself. Mm. It's not. You can't disconnect it from emotion. Mm. You can't disconnect it from it's, responsibility. It's deep, it's deep bro. Yeah. You Deeper can't disconnect thought, eh? from relationships. Mm. Because I promise you, you have a chick, eh? Yeah. You have a child as well. Mm, mm. How long have you been with your chick? Six years now. Six years. Mm. If your chick has to send you a message now and say, I'm here at the hotel, I just fucked some guy. You go off your fucking head. Oh, no. The, the, I'll fucking break this camera. This podcast you understand will what I'm saying? Yeah. And the thing is, people don't look at it like that because you need to be in a relationship for six years with someone you love who means the world to you to feel that pain. If you fucked some chick this weekend and she fucked someone else on Monday, do you care? No. Nah. You don't give a fuck. Yeah. You see? So we've been taught that that behavior is cool. But also, it's, it's a, sex is a spiritual thing. It is. Like that's what I'm saying. You can't beyond, disconnect it yeah. from all these things. Yeah. You see? Yeah. And like media, everything, social media, everyone just like, I look at like a lot of tweets where chicks are just like, I need dick. <laughs> <laughs> and I know these chicks. And then I'm like, the fuck why would you say that <laughs> but what happens on that tweet no, me, whoa, i'm not finished <laughs> what happens on that tweet a thousand people reply because that tweet is it gets you likes and replies yeah. and now people cloud are chasing you cloud chasing mm -hmm. you see I'm saying, I know that chick that's tweeting and saying, I need dick. I know this person. During the week, she's like, hashtag in my next. There we go. Weekend. Besides that, weekend. weekend. No, she's not even that need dick girl. <laughs> she's, she's fucking no one. <laughs> but she's saying it on Twitter because she wants a reaction from people. She's cloud chasing. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. And it's putting out the wrong message. Yeah. I've had my run in with a lot of young girls. Mm. Young girls are very impressionable. Yeah. You know, young, from the time that I was 16, I was operating. Mm. So I know that when I was 16 and how I operated when I was 16 is very different to how I operated when I was 26. Mm. Because 16-year-old girls to 19-year-old girls are very different to 26-year-old girls to 29-year-old girls. Mm. Mm. You understand? Mm -hmm. And it's the same with guys in the same age categories. Mm. 
And uh, do you really know at the age of 19 when you fucking lot of horse? Do you know how you're going to feel about that when you're 29? Nope. No. You don't. No, you've no, got no, to no. get to 29. You've got to first of all have that long list of pays that you've yeah. slayed. Yeah. Get to 29 and then actually be with somebody who you love so much it hurts. Yeah. You're like, fuck, this is my queen. You know what I'm saying? It's like an extra organ. You know what I'm saying, dog? Mm. Like, fuck an hell. You know, like me, when I think of my chick, you know, when I think of, this is the person that I want to marry. This is the person I want to be with for the rest of my life. I don't want to fuck anybody else. Yeah. Then I think, what a puss. What was wrong with me that time <laughs> when I was doing this thing? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But you only learn it from like lived experience. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So don't judge people. But yeah. at the same time, just be wiser with the choices Wh- that you When you're make. 19, you want to fuck everything. You when fuck you're 29, everything you, you just want And one. you don't care about the cost of that. Yeah. You see? Yeah. You want to fuck everything. But it's like, what if you're breaking girls' hearts? You mm. could be fucking that girl that's a virgin that yeah. really likes you. Yeah. And yeah. you're just doing it so you can tell your friends that you did it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. That's what, that comes at another cost. Yeah. Do you appreciate that cost when you're 19? You're like, oh, fucking, I don't care, fuck her, bro. I'll fucking block her now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you understand? Yeah, yeah. Then kids do some dumb shit and be like, ah, what's wrong with this one? Why is this one doing that? Yeah. They come from this fucking thing where it's like, hey, when you find out that this sex thing is not actually this, this game with no fucking consequences. Yeah. It's not. Go and fuck a hundred niggas and I come think back hi- and tell me you're cool. <laughs> <laughs> you're fine. That's nonsense. I think hip hop fucked me up a lot. Why? No, because you know when you listen to hip hop, all you hear is fuck this bitch, I fucked this, she sucked yeah, my dick. This, yeah, but you see, even them, they sing about it. You know, even Kanye, Kanye sings, there's a lyric of his, where I thought, he says, uh, I'm a sick fuck, I like a quick fuck. fuck yeah. I'm like, no, don't lie, boss. You live with Kim, he's your fro. <laughs> you lie. <laughs> You're not quick fucking anyway. You know what I'm I honestly, I don't think Kanye cheats on Kim, but he raps about it. But I think Travis definitely cheats on Kylie. Yeah. You check what I'm saying. But then that 19 year old that's listening to I'm a sick fuck is going to be like, oh, I uh, Me too. I'm a sick fuck. I like a queen. Let me fuck you in the bathroom. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? That shit is whack, too, dude. Like, if you can't find a bed, find a bed, dude. <laughs> <laughs> that shit is cock. Uh, what is this? It's hype. Listen, People man. make you believe hype. Uh, we've been chatting for an hour and I haven't even asked you the questions I want to ask you, man. I feel like we haven't even spoken about anything, but it's been I so feel long. so thirsty because I spoke so much. You know what I mean? Mm. So I want to have you back. I don't know when, but we've got to schedule another one. Dude, you got to come back, bro. There's so much you got to talk about still, man. Like what? Um, like you selling drugs, bro. Me selling drugs? Yeah. yeah, I don't sell drugs. That's the thing. I would never sell drugs. Yeah. Because you must know your place. <laughs> and the people who currently sell drugs... I would not fuck with. Mm. Do you understand what I'm saying? I'm not trying to go to war over some fucking drug money. Mm. And from what I hear of the drug game, the people that are in it are nothing to be played with. I don't think they'll just be like, hey, welcome to the club. (laughs) How's it? What are you selling? Weed. Great stuff. I'm selling cocaine. Super. (laughs) Not going to happen. Oh, man. Are you still still a good judge of character of um, people that are on drugs or not? Yeah, definitely, boo. I actually, I had an episode this morning. Yeah. I on my fucking WhatsApp, I can show you right now, but I can't show you because yeah. the person will be upset. Yeah. But I just called somebody out and I said, listen, I'm not a cunt. Yeah. You are on drugs. Yeah. You are fucking on drugs. Yeah. End of story. I'm not entertaining this back and forth excuse making behavior. <laughs> You're on drugs and I'm coming there. You're going for a drug test. This <laughs> I'm expecting when I go back to my phone, yeah. she's run away. Yeah. You understand? Because I know it all to it's a family member. Yeah. Do you understand? Okay, and let me let me throw some family members on drugs, dog. Let me throw some names to you. And yeah. tell me if you think they're on drugs. Okay. Uh show my Josie. Mm, I doubt it. I don't think so. No? Yeah. I wouldn't know though. I'm not. Yeah, no, this enough. is allegedly yeah. like we're oh, not alleged. Nah, yeah, no, fuck no. I highly no, doubt. No, I'm it. saying we're not confirming or denying anything, but I, I know. Highly you. doubt it. Okay. Her behavior is not doesn't certainly doesn't say t- to me that she's uh like, Dinner Ranak. Nah, do you think? Nah, I don't think so. I also don't think so. I think she's very grown up. I actually think she's very mature. Yeah. Nah. Um, but again, you see, people use past rumors and allegations as a justification for present ones. Oh, yes. You yes, know what I'm saying? Yeah. Where it's yes. like, ah, oh, MacIver, remember that time when he was drunk that day? So I'm sure he was drunk because he crashed his car. Yeah. Maybe you just fucking had an ad- accident, you know? Uh, what about Kevin MT? Watson? <laughs> <laughs> MT. MT. 
I don't know what type of drugs, but I think he's an open weed smoker. Mm-hmm. You know, those guys, they, they make no qualms about it. They were drinking that cough mixture shit. They tell you we're we on that lean now. Yeah. So I don't think he stopped, but it's, he doesn't hide it. Mm. Yeah, and I don't think he's on heavy drugs. No, I don't think he's on like rocks. I don't think he's smoking hafif and shit. Yeah. But I think he's, he, he drinks lean and I think he smokes weed. Because that's what I know him to have spoken about before. He, you know, he openly admits it. Yeah. So maybe he does it less than he used to before. And but I mean, all power to him. Fucking do it, bro. That's where the ideas come from. You see, the thing is, you also need to make a differentiation between recreational drug usage and a drug addict. Mm. I've got a lot of friends. And some of my friends are recreational drug users. Mm. I myself, I don't partake. I've okay. never partaken. Give me names of who you think is on drugs. When you see them on TV or, you, or like, yeah, you're like, no, this one, this one. Like Moonchild, for example. Would you see No, them? Moonchild is just an excitable human being. I mean, if you, if you meet her and you get to spend five minutes with her, especially if it's on stage, or yeah. at a, you'll realize that she she's, doesn't need drugs. She's a mood, she's bro. She's fine. She's, yeah, a, she's mood. a super mood. Yeah. I did uh, the New Year's Eve event in town. Yeah. Um, the Mary Fitzgerald yeah, one. She town. was performing. I was MC. She's That's so where cool. I said, no, this one. Yeah. She's just a bundle of, bundle of joy. joy yeah. um, also, like, hey, fuck, who do we even have, Xen? Tira. Do you think Tira's on drugs? No, fuck. That guy, he's too clever. He's too astute a businessman. He wouldn't do so. I don't think Tira even drinks. I think he pretends to drink. <laughs> That's how fucking... That, that nigga is... <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You get those guys, you. Tira looks like he'll pull up at the party, empty a whole bottle of champagne, and then pour apple tizer in it, and be like, oh, yeah, just put some champagne. And pretend to be drinking champagne so that everybody around him, while they're getting drunk... Thinks he's drunk, but he's actually still sober. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Remember when we used to do events? You yeah, know, yeah. you at the door, you count your money you made at the door. We make like fucking 80, 90, 100, couple of hundred thousand. <laughs> that nigga's counting the money at the door at Fact Urban Rocks, boss. <laughs> this is like fucking four bar. <laughs> <laughs> you can't be drunk for that shit. Uh, Shimza? I refuse. Mm. Shimza? No, guaranteed not. I don't think Shimza's even tasted beer either. <laughs> Shimza doesn't, he's never, but that's how some people are. Yeah. They just don't, they're just not interested. Yeah. That's me with drugs. Mm. With drugs, I'm just not interested. Even AKA? if you can tell me it's the best thing ever, I'm out. AKA? I don't know, but it wouldn't make sense to me. Why? Mm. He exudes confidence. Mm. He's at the top of his game. Mm. I feel like can he can speak can Zulu. Can <laughs> he's speak a colored Zulu. girl, can speak Zulu. He's fucking, he's dating Zintle, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. He's got, a family. He, like he, he's, he seems to me to be in a very happy place. And I know because we, do, we were doing his bodyguarding throughout December in his busy period. He's got a bodyguard. He must have a bodyguard. Dude, always a, he's, a, he's a very important person. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. If AKA gets hurt, we must die tomorrow. Bro, the fucking dick say. Yeah. The country will crash. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. We've got to look after our stars. But again, yeah. nothing about his life suggests to me that he would turn to that for yeah. any reason. Unless it's for, if Maybe it's for, for recreational creative, yeah. use, then I'm not there when he does it, so I wouldn't be able to make that call. Because, like I said, if you make a differentiation between recreational drug or alcohol use and abuse of it, you know, where somebody's an addict now, mm-hmm. we, we're looking at these people and we're like, fuck, this one needs to stop because we're really worried about them. Yeah. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. But if it's, if it's somebody who's doing it recreationally, you'd never know because they would be doing it when and if they choose to, oh, which you. might not necessarily be right before a TV interview. Mm-hmm. And I mean, even that guy, I've seen that guy, bro, when he used to come to Live Amp, the shows at half past seven, that nigga was there at five o'clock. Yeah. He was rehearsing. He came with his band. His engineer was sorting out the sound, making sure everything's okay. He did six, seven, eight, nine runs of the same song over and over to make sure it's perfect. Yeah. It's not the type of person that kind of just rocks up at quarter past seven and says, hey, why can't we here to perform? Yeah. You know? Chilliam? Where the fuck? Where is that guy? <laughs> where is he? <laughs> I don't know where he is. <laughs> you know? Out of sight, out of mind. Out of sight, I can't make that call. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? No worries. And also, it's, always, it's almost always... We have this willingness to be subjective. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. I don't do that. You know what I'm saying? For me, I give someone a chance up to and including the point at which I can prove for myself yeah. that I shouldn't have given them, given them that chance to begin with. Yeah. Or I can prove for myself that they are doing what we suspected them of doing. Personally, publicly, 
the works. You know what I'm saying? Um, it's like there was a time when uh, somebody took a photo with Arthur. Mm. Like a photo. It was Nomzamo. Mm. And everybody started shitting on her oh, yes. for taking a photo with Arthur. How could she? Mm. He is a gender abuser and he beats his wife, his chick or whatever the fuck. You know what I'm saying? Like they just went in on her. Mm. On her. Mm. On Nomzamo. Mm. For something that they are saying Arthur allegedly he did. did. Mm. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm. All of those people tweeting. They weren't there the day that whatever happened mm. between mm. Arthur and his fro happened. They weren't there. Yeah. They weren't there in court when this court case was now. Because the thing is, we can't just abandon the presumption of innocence. Yeah. There'll be chaos. Yeah. We can't do that. But we he won the case. follow the law. He won, he the won the, now. But this, this was happening before the mm. case was even decided. Mm. They were like, how dare you? And then she had to come up with the whole story about how the photo was taken. And then she kind of took their side. And I was like, this is too much. Mm. Every time I see Arthur, I take a photo. You know that OX. He's like a Bali. Arthur will see you be like, hey, MacGyver, how's it? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. He's like that timer who just discovered Instagram. <laughs> you know, like sees with Lomo. <laughs> he takes a photo of himself in a hat. <laughs> I, said, I commented on his picture. I was like, you're such a dad, bro. <laughs> you know? So Arthur is that oak. Yeah. Now, you don't know that if you've never taken a photo with, with Arthur him. or been at an event or at Live Amp or at anywhere in this country, bro, from Can Do Event. I've been, I've been taking photos with Arthur for over 10 years. If you're a handle, you won't know that. This is it. Mm. You see, you won't know that. Yeah. And the thing is, how can you now attack Nomzamo? You weren't there. You don't know what happened. And besides that, this man is still going through the legal process. Should we shun him now? And that's what happened with Babes and... Um Mumping, you see, mm. but I don't know what the fuck they're doing. I mean, they, they're just all over the place. I, I think that <laughs> they're on drugs. <laughs> <laughs> you see, you're speculating. <laughs> I can't make that call, I don't plumb with them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I must be honest, I'm very confused as to what the fuck is happening yeah. because. <laughs> they put up their flyer for the Bonnie and Clyde tour yeah. where they're like breaking into a house and whatever yeah. and then they've both got guns or something Mom, Babes is, is coming out of the bathroom because yeah. there's a toilet in the background of her image and Mum Pincha is coming down the passage and I was like this is mildly inappropriate yeah. you guys are lovers guns you're in a bathroom someone coming down the passage what the fuck is happening in this tour you know I just thought that we ever Decided to go with that picture for the publicity image. Yeah. Didn't think it through. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, they're like back together. They're happy. Everything's cool. Do you understand? Yeah. What's happening? Because not so long ago, they were enemies. Mm. Remember? Mm. And this is the thing about matters of the heart. Yep. You see? Yeah. In Zulu, they say, in Tando. You know? My granny used to say that a lot. Mm. You know what I'm saying? When it comes to love, you cannot tell the two people who are in love what to do. Yep. You can tell them what you think is right mm -hmm. and what you think is wrong and domestic violence and abuse and don't stay with him because he's like this and don't stay with her because, oh, he's fair, babe, whatever. Mm. If that person loves that woman and that woman loves that man, there's nothing that society can do by means of putting them under pressure and judging them and talking shit to them and about them that will make those two people be apart. And that's why that we simple. have soulmates. That's why we have soulmates. If somebody had to come to me, and you must know your partner well enough to make that call. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If somebody had to go to my chick and say, Warwick was doing X, Y, and Z, my chick would ask me first. Yeah. I'd like to believe. Yeah. You know, chicks don't always do that. Yeah. And I would do the same with her. I could walk into a hotel room where there's six naked men and her, mm. and she's pouring herself a drink, and I would ask what's going on. Yeah. I trust her that much. Mm. Do you understand what I'm saying? You must know your person that much. And we don't know how the two of them know each other. Yeah. You know? We can make a call on what we saw in an Instagram live video. But we don't know what happened but prior But we don't know that. what happened prior. We don't know what happened after. Mm -hmm. We don't even know how many times that something like that happened. Mm. And these reports that but we you get said, are you all said something after very the fact, profound. Dude. Singena api. Singena api. Leave them. I'm fucking, I'm both happy for them. Even if they are on drugs. <laughs> because if they are, they're fucking having a time. They're, they're making money. Them. They're making music. They're touring the country. Bonnie and Clyde. All power to, and I like I get along like a house on fire with my pinch. I've known those niggas since big Nas days, you know. Mm. He's my dude. 
You know what I'm saying? And I like babes. I have a small crush on her, but I wouldn't fuck with mom pincha, so I won't act on that crush. You know, nigga will fuck me up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I like them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I think it's, a, it's <laughs> like people are just too into other people's business. Mm. Where you're just too interested as public figures. I don't know. Maybe it's when you like become a public figure, that's the agreement you make. Ah, fuck, man. Hey, this guy. Yes, so this guy. Yes, this, we killed the... F- Dude, for the first time ever, we killed the, the, the card. <laughs> <laughs> so we got to say goodbye. We got to say goodbye. But you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. Uh, let me keep recording the audio here. Okay. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, just to close my but point. That's, that's why I said I got to have you back again, bro. No, I'll come back, my friend. But Please. I'm going to Durban on Wednesday. Yeah, when you're in Joburg, we will do this And I'll again. be back, like, in the beginning, I'll be back probably most weekends. Yeah. And then, like, from probably December, I'll be here a lot more than there because yeah. of work and shit. But what I was about to say is that I feel like you pissed off at Twitter, man. Like, you just don't get it. Who, me? Yeah. If I'm pissed off at Twitter. Yeah, it sounds like you're pissed off at the whole uh, Twitter... I am. I am. Because I believe that, it, especially now recently with the Am I Next movement and the xenophobia movement, I think it's shown how dangerous it can be. Mm. It's been used as a tool to character assassinate people in the entertainment industry and in the corporate world. For what? Mm. You understand what I'm saying? And the thing is, anytime you say something like that, which is an actually objective point... I'm not saying fuck the victims. You know what I mean? And anybody that comes to me and says, I am blaming the victims, I'm saying fuck the victims, I'll fucking punch them in their face. Mm. That's how the links I'm prepared to go to, to fight it. Because I have, I've actually, fuck dude, you know one day I, I took a girl, I found a girl that had been raped under a bridge in Florida. you kidding. God's truth. A white, young white girl, 16 years old. Shit. I loaded her in my car, because I thought she was, I was like, what the fuck? I knew her from like around Florida. Yeah. Didn't know her, like, you know. I took her to the police station first. Switch off the lights there. Yeah. I took her to the police station. And we were lucky to be helped by a constable, Josephs, this colored auntie. She was the policeman on hand to handle this rape case. And the thing is, she was like, she was super patient. She was very, very caring and compassionate with this. I didn't know what to do, dude. I didn't know, must I hold this child? Must I? I took physically pick her up and put her in the car. She was full of blood. She'd been beaten. Her head was bleeding. Mm. I was like, what the fuck? I thought she'd been moored. Mm. You know, I didn't think she'd been raped at that stage. She wasn't saying anything to me. She was just saying, help me, help me. Took her to this auntie. We went into a separate room in the police station, like an office, alone, with this constable. And she like, I was there because I brought her in. Mm. She like, talked her through it. Very slowly and very patiently. Mm. You know, what happened, say for me, like in Afrikaans, mm. and she just broke down and she let the whole story out. She was raped by who, where, what happened, etc. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And I got fucking angry because mm. I was like, fuck, let's find these guys. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Thug life. Mm. But that cop was, again, very patient, very compassionate. She just handled it so well. After she'd taken down that initial statement, she said, let's go. We went to Flora Clinic, the hospital that was closest. Mm. So within an hour of us getting to the police station, we were already at the hospital where they conducted the rape kit and all that shit, you know, for evidence. Mm. And then back to the police station we went. She made another statement and there was like somebody senior. But this woman, she literally took this child and she stayed with this child step by step throughout this entire procedure. And I was there for all of it because the, I didn't, this person had no parents. Mm. She had no cell phone. She didn't know anybody's number. Do you understand what I'm saying? So I was basically her dad for the day. Mm. And I felt really sorry for her, you know what I'm saying? And I felt like these people that did this, like they didn't spare a second thought for this child. Mm. And what she'd been through, I wouldn't wish on my worst enemy. Yeah. Do you understand what I'm saying? So I've seen firsthand what a fucking victim is and what people have gone through. You know what I'm saying? It's happened to close family members of mine. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like mm. close, close family members of mine. My, my cousin was raped. Mm. And it was a big deal in the family. You know what I'm saying? So, and I've seen what it did to her. She fucking lost her mind. She went through this depression for years. Bro. She was in and out of fucking Crescent Clinic. She, she just, she couldn't cope with life well. So there are people who bear the real scars of real things that have happened to them. And what I felt Twitter did is they took this fucking movement and they used it as a club to shut anybody up who didn't agree with them and to character assassinate any and everybody that they could fucking get their hands on. And I felt like it was directionless and it was pointless. 
Because now that whole thing happened over the space of a week. There was over 50, 100,000 tweets. How many cases have been opened? How many people have been charged? Zero. Zero. We can go to all the police stations in Joburg. Not a single fucking tweet has translated into a case being laid. So what difference have you made? You fucking made a whole lot of noise and you've ruined people's careers and ruined people's names and reputations. For what? So you could fucking grandstand and have a loud voice. That's bullshit, bro. And I don't believe it's all females. But because Twitter has this other thing where it makes a small minority of people extremely have, have noisy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We big think voice, yeah. they are a majority. <clears throat> Again, it's bullshit. Remember that Clifton Beach thing? Mm. Fucking made noise. Yeah, we're going to come there. We're going to slaughter a sheep. Even that thing. I really don't believe there was anything to slaughter a sheep on the beach for to begin with. But anyway, they went to slaughter a, beach, a sheep on the beach. How many people turned up there? Over 70,000 tweets that day alone. 40 people went to slaughter the sheep. Yeah. Fucking cowards. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? No, You're I, making noise, but you, do, you didn't pull up. I, I said this in one of my previous episodes. There's a difference between social media and reality. Yes, and people get cast up. They don't realize that. Yeah. You know? And that's where I think Twitter is very dangerous. The second thing it was dangerous with now in recent times was this xenophobia thing. I work, again, I'm not talking from a place of out of my ass. I'm fucking there. I'm on the front line. I know what I'm talking about. We were in JP's town at fucking two o'clock in the morning when the whole of the hostel started marching to come and loot shops. It's not our job to stop them. And we're not going to fuck with those niggas, dog. Those niggas are dangerous. But they didn't kill anyone. They went to loot the shops. So we need to look at this thing and say, what is actually going on here? Is it xenophobia? Or is xenophobia just a byproduct of rampant criminality? Because that's what it was. These guys, were, they were walking... And they were breaking shop windows and shop doors and going in and taking stuff out. And there were thousands of them, MacGyver, you know, and they move like an impi. Mm. And they make those sounds. And they've all got kailambas and sakilas. And Who's going to approach them? The police. There was like 50 cops, dog. 50 cops, 1,000 guys. You're not going to approach them. Mm. You'll die. Mm. So nobody did anything. But were it was the masked. cops prepared? But it was masked under the xenophobia thing. You know what I'm saying? Where mm. it's like, oh, they're attacking foreign-owned shops. I can promise you. If those shops were owned by locals, which some of them were, they would have attacked those too. It wasn't about... They were just hungry. Yeah, right? and now this xenophobia... Yes, there is an element of xenophobia. It's not to dismiss it completely. But if you look at social media, you have this fucking... What's this knob from Nigeria? Tiwa Savage or whatever. Mm. She's talking about, I'm not coming to perform because my people are dying. You're not here. You have no proof or evidence that anybody died. She saw a video on social media. But the video was video. exactly a fake video. So you see how social media can power cast cats up? Media. This is the power that it has. And people are taking that power, which isn't real, like we've said, mm -hmm. and they are now casting it into reality. reality. Yep. And now in reality, we think that's real life. And it's not real life. Yeah. Like I'm saying, I was there in town. Yeah. Nobody died, bro. Nobody even fought. Honestly, nobody got hurt. At least where I was, and I was there by the fucking heart of the battle, by my my, there by Jeppy Sound. It's crazy, man. It's like you can start off from one tweet, one person, like you're saying, a minority. Someone tweets, let's say you're an artist, Waras is mm -hmm. an artist. Someone tweets, I don't like Waras' song. And then I'm going to tell my friends, ah, people don't like Waras' song. Exactly. And now, that's just one see, person, one tweet. And the thing is, it's got all this power. And how much value, how much power do we give to that power? Hmm. I don't give that power any power. Like somebody can come on Twitter and tell me, hey, fuck you, you're a pussy. I tell them, hey, fuck you. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Or I just ignore them. Yeah. Like I'm saying, I was arguing with this idiot about the Mugabe legacy thing. This guy wasn't, you know, like, again, objective points, facts. You know, I watch a lot of this, like the type of stuff that I watch in my downtime. I tweeted the other day that I don't have DSTV. People think because they started tweeting me saying, yeah, that's easy for you to say because you're privileged. We can't watch the rugby, whatever. I'm like, I can't watch the rugby. I don't have DSTV. Yeah. I don't have DSTV because I can't afford it. I cannot justify spending a thousand rand a month for a premium package of which I only consume three channels. Yeah. Fuck it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Logically, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. But I do have fiber. Yeah. And you I can do watch have fast Wi-Fi. So watch I anything. lay and I watch YouTube. I watch a lot of... I watch a lot of... Logical thinkers. I like guys like Ben Shapiro. Do you mm. know Ben Shapiro? Yeah, I know ben I like Joe Rogan. I like... Joe Rogan's crazy. Um, eh? Who else? Joe Rogan's crazy, dog. Just I like Jordan Peterson. Yeah. I like... Uh, what's Podcast. this woman? Podcast and Jill. 
podcast and chill. I love podcast and chill. It's my fave. <laughs> I like um, no, but like like if you look at a lot of yeah. If yeah. you honestly, if you go and watch enough of that stuff, you'll see why where a lot of the stuff I say it comes, comes from. from. Yeah, but it's like I was saying the stuff. Then I found these guys, and they kind of put into words Same what I was WhatsApp thinking. Group, yeah. That's it. Yeah. You can and articulate I, it. You see. And when you watch stuff like that, it changes your view. Yeah. It opens this third eye in the middle of your head. You know where Indians have a dot? Mm -hmm. Same place. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 and you look at that eye, and you see these tweets, and you're like, Crenshaw up when's Yeah. And you see the xenophobia, 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 and then you go to town, the hill bra, where this thing is happening. There's nothing happening. Dude, so essentially what you're saying is that you're, you're using your mind. You're using your mind to apply which stuff. Which is rare. Which is very rare. Nobody uses their mind. People use their emotions. Yeah. You see? And when you make emotion, the times I've made emotional decisions, I've either been charged with assault or fired. it's ended badly for me. <laughs> or fired. Don't make, because usually the emotion I tend to is anger. I've reacted angrily a lot of times. The other day I had an altercation in... My Pakistani shop there. Yeah. That I always buy my Fuck, we've got cigarettes. 10 seconds, man. Waras, thank you okay, for coming. I love around. you, Kaiva. You, my Listen, son. Uh, we're going to do this again. Remember I told you, yes. you've got so much to talk about. We've got plenty to talk about. We'll do it in the next one. Take it easy. And if it's easy, take it home. Check me out. Kakasi FM 3 to 6, nigga. You know what it is. Fusak. Dima. Jello. That's the fucking nigga that kept listening. Yo, I'm tired. Podcast and chill. Matt G, the ghost lady, and Len Moleko.